Good afternoon, diesel fans, and I've got something really exciting to show you. This is the new V2 quick spool valve by Diesel Pump UK. Very, very exciting. And I'm going to run through some of the detail right now. Okay, so first of all, you need to know what a quick spool valve is, what a quick spool valve does to understand why I'm getting so excited about this product. Right, I've done some very simple drawings to help you understand, and I even have the original prop from the old video. Yes, it is a blow up, rubber glove. Right, so we've got three different types of uh, commonly used systems. Well, two commonly used and one which we use. Open scroll, twin scroll, and quick spool valve. If you look at the diagrams, the six circles represent your six cylinders of a six cylinder engine. Obviously, if it was a four cylinder, it'd be four circles. Um, all of them have six because we're keeping it like for like. Right, so we're also going to be uh, having a like for like turbo housing on each of these versions. That's also very important. Um, so let's exam imagine it's this S300 with a twin scroll housing. If you imagine <clears throat> as your cylinder fires, because firing order on a six cylinder engine is one, five, three, six, two, four, only ever fires one cylinder at once. This is the deposit of gas that comes out of that cylinder. So as that ejects out of the cylinder, it comes down the manifold and then to the volute of the turbo here, which is a snail shape, as you can see here, and it drives the exducer, which is this blade here. So you imagine this ball of gas flies down the exhaust manifold into there, round there, and then spins that. It's really that simple. Now, when you're using an open manifold, say for example, if you're using it on this twin scroll or that twin scroll turbo, that ball of gas is going to be divided amongst those two sections. If it was open, obviously it won't divide, but it will still be going round in a less high pressure form. Now that's going to spin that wheel quite slowly in comparison to if it was all forced as one full ball into one half. Right, so imagine this is kind of like the low power, low pressure option. However, the resistance at higher RPM, at high speed, is going to be less because you're dividing that one ball of gas amongst that whole turbo housing. So less resistance, more top end power, but less low end spool up. Okay, so then we go on to the twin scroll. Com conventional twin scroll system takes you three cylinders and three cylinders divides them up. And as I mentioned the firing order before, one, five, three, six, two, four, it's always hopping backwards and forwards so that you're always getting a split. So the, the, each side of the engine, each cylinder is never interfering with another because it's divided. It cannot come out of one and then go up into five because it'd have to go through the turbine and back up. So that's one of the benefits of a twin scroll. One of them uh, is pulse division. But the other main benefit of a twin scroll is the spool up gain. Most people think twin scroll, yeah, spool up gain. Yes, that's correct. It does because it divides that one ball of gas coming out into the one side of the turbo housing, which does spool the turbo up faster. However, it brings you back to the uh, problem of at high RPM, when there's lots of these balls coming out in a short frame of time, it becomes restrictive to squeeze many of these into one side of that port. So you end up with a top end restriction and often less top end power. So how can we get around that? How can we make the best of both worlds? Well, five, six, seven years ago now, we brought out the quick spool valve, the very early version of the quick spool valve. And what that does is <clears throat> it basically allows you to use an open manifold the old version allowed you to use an open manifold and it allowed that ball of gas to travel and then at the last minute it would block off, basically it would block off with a flap one of those ports so that it would send all the gas into one and it would spool up your turbo, which is great. However, you couldn't take benefit of the, um, of the pulse division because it had to be an open manifold. Um, I mean, long runners are going to help a little, but you couldn't. Uh, but it did prove a thousand RPM quicker spool up time with an S300 turbo over 
a conventional open manifold. And the power increase on the dyno, because we hit the power in a set frame, time frame, was higher. Amazing, win-win. So imagine you're a ball of gas and you've just been blasted out of a cylinder and you're traveling at a really high speed straight to this valve here and the valve is currently closed. You're gonna to have to be squeezed through that small hole in there and then come out of the other side into one side of the turbo. Now that's obviously gonna spool the turbo up really quick because that big ball has to fit all in that hole. Right, as your turbo's spooled up nice and quick, the driver's pleased as punch, he's behind the wheel and he couldn't be happier. The power's building up real fast and that means the boost's building up. And that air pressure from the compressor side of your turbo then opens this valve here. This actually opens at less than a bar. So that valve opens and when that valve then opens, by this point you're already at higher RPM making higher horsepower, suddenly the gas, which is having to squeeze through that small hole to get that turbo going, is suddenly able to pass through both sides, which is fantastic. It suddenly has better flow, less resistance, and then it can really sing. It creates like a perpetual effect where the, the engine has better flow, can make more horsepower, and then, you know, you end up with like an overall gain. So that's why we like to use it. Gets the turbo spooled up fast, then opens up, no resistance or less resistance, and then loads of horsepower, which you can't get with traditional twin scroll or open scroll. So it's fantastic. It's kind of like a variable geometry turbo, but much more simple and reliable, and you can use it with big, bad turbos like that. Right, so how have we refined the design? So obviously that system's been out for five, six years, whatever it's been, and it's been quite good. We've had maybe one or two failures in the whole production run, which is pretty good as far as quick spool valves go. They, they are known in some applications to be unreliable, and that is simply because of the way they're made. So if we go over here, we can see the old quick spool valve versus the new quick spool valve. This is the old one, if you'd like to come a bit closer and I'll show you. It was a single 12 mil shaft that was uh, machined on one side to accept this stainless steel flap. We then would weld either side of there to make that one piece and then that's basically stuck in there. If you had to remove it, you'd have to chop it and whatever, but that seemed to be the most reliable way. If you ever see one of these quick spool valves, by the way, that has any bolts or fixings or anything like that inside the turbo housing, run a mile. That is not gonna work. Never, never, never is that ever gonna be reliable. So this worked pretty well. The original versions had a 10 mil shaft. Um, we did have a split in one and we went up to a 12 mil shaft, which is what this is, and they became a lot more reliable. But obviously uh, designs have to develop, have to advance. So this is it. This is the new version. Uh, that's it in split down form, but this is it in its uh, assembled form. So as you can see straight away, um, the division doesn't come all the way to the top. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that you can now use this valve on a twin scroll manifold, which was impossible before. If you used this on a twin scroll manifold before, it would have completely blocked off one exhaust port to three cylinders. Whereas this new one has been designed with a recess under there so that when it's bolted up, you've still got almost a full exhaust port's width for that gas to get through, um, which at low gas speeds works perfectly fine. So you can use this on a twin scroll manifold, which is quite an exciting new thing. Um, secondly, one of the, the really big points of this is um, water cooling. So obviously heat stability is a problem with anything that's manifold related. So by putting cooling channels into this uh, block, the whole thing is stabilized, which is fantastic because it means we can now integrate, oh, and throw all the bolts on the floor, a, uh, a brass bushing, bronze brass bushing. This bushing obviously would not normally be able to take the heat of a non-water cooled valve, but because we've water cooled it, that is now possible. So now we have a replaceable bushing that can be taken out. 
One very important factor as well when designing this quick spool valve is the thickness of the valve. Now we were very happy with the original thickness and the original design, so we needed to keep to within a similar tolerance. Yes, this is thicker than the old, um, it, very marginally, a few mil thicker, but it has managed to integrate the angle that we wanted for the flap and all the rest. There are other valve designs on the market that l allow that flap to stand upright and to flop either way to give the best transition of gas from one side to the other. However, it's not viable to put that type between uh, a normal turbo and a normal manifold. So if you already had a twin turbo LS setup, you wouldn't be able to take that style of valve. Whereas this, you're only, you know, you're under 30 millimeters for the thickness of that valve between the turbo and the manifold, which means it'll fit in pretty much most applications. Now, one really important point to mention is that with the new design, the, the valve itself, the actual flap, um, is a one-piece construction. So, where previously it was a, a blade w welded to a, a shaft, which created stress points, this is actually uh, all, one, all one piece. And to do that, we've obviously had to make a, a sort of a letterbox, a giant hole that this can pass through, and then the bushing, the bearing, then seals that in. So that is awesome. And also you'll have noticed the division between the two sides um, allows this valve to sit at an angle. So instead of previously where, when the valve was closed, the gas would hit almost a pocket and cause a, a sort of a resistance. Now, because the valve sits at an angle, it shoots it down into the port that's open, which is a, a brilliant efficiency bonus. And it's not creating lots of resistance and heat in that particular area. So a quick summary of the benefits, old versus new. Shaft diameter on the old, 12 mil, new one 16. So even though it's all one piece, the shaft is still increased. Uh, the one piece flap that I've just mentioned, replaceable bushings. So if this wears, this is a replaceable piece. Uh, water cooling on the new version, which means if you've got an LS, something petrol, big turbo, you're wanting to you know, use a quick spool system on a big twin scroll turbo like that, you can do it. Whereas with the old one, it wasn't advised. The heat is too much for that moving system. This one, yes, you can do that. Um, dynamic seal or a labyrinth seal. So we've got a small annular groove around the shaft, which when the, with the old one, a venturi effect sort of helped to stop the gas escaping, but there was no real seal. We put a small labyrinth seal on, that helps to keep the gas in. You don't lose a lot anyway, but it's an extra gain. Use on high horsepower petrol applications, like I've just described, is now possible due to the water cooling, the one piece design. Um, and obviously, as I mentioned initially, it can be used on a twin scroll manifold, which is absolutely fantastic.